Our Father Cares, a daily YouTube devotional with Christian Bredahl and the Shepherd's Call team. Join us for today's devotional thought. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Let's have a word of prayer before we begin. Father in heaven, we ask that you would please bless us now as we want to understand more of your will for us and how we might please you and bring honor and glory to you, Father. We ask for the Holy Spirit, the indwelling of Christ, that His obedience, His love, His life can be lived out through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I have not been able to wait. I've been interested to, to uh, since I read this yesterday, interested to see what an argument infidels cannot resist is. John 12, 36. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. Amen. Tyler, how about we have you start, start off today? Okay. A well-ordered Christian household is an argument that the infidel cannot resist. He finds no place for his cavils, trivi trivial fault-finding. And the children of such a household are prepared to meet the sophisties, sophistries. sophistries of infidelity. They have accepted the Bible as the basis of their faith, and they have a firm foundation that cannot be swept away by the, in by the incoming tide of skepticism. So what's that saying? A lot. <laughs> it is saying a lot. A well-ordered Christian household is an argument that the infidel cannot resist. What does that mean? Well, it's, it's such an abnormal thing. It, mm -hmm. it, what's an abnormal thing? To have a well-ordered home. Yes! Mm -hmm. There's just, you know, chaos and attitudes and screaming and, and you know, just uh, messiness yeah. and, well, and disorder. And The other day and we were observing that, right. and this child was this unruly little kid and he was running the show what was he two or three years old <laughs> running the show and I was thinking that parent needs to understand some beautiful godly principles right. of how to raise the child w was your childhood terrible and oppressive no. no but you guys were good obedient children so when we have guidelines and we have a Christian household right. it brings attention in the infidel can't go yeah, but it doesn't make any difference in your life. Uh, yes, it does. Right. Even in the life of my children, right. you you can't fake children. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In well, they're words, creatures you, of instinct. They're creatures. That that, and and when they're, they're real young, and their environment, and they're just selfish in nature, typically, right? as they're young. And mm -hmm. so, when you do have God's presence in the house and they're learning to trust in, in that and to surrender those selfish feelings. Yes. That's harder to argue with than even an adult who can affect it. A children typically cannot affect that They something. are who they are. Right. Yeah. And so in other words, that's why it's so a well ordered Christian home it, and, and the children of such a household are prepared to meet mm -hmm. the sophistries of infidelity. So my children, by God's grace, are prepared to meet with the scoffers and all these things. No, my life is better. And the evidence of that is we have, you know, pleasant children. Right. I, well, I could fake it. You right. could fake it. Now, they're getting to the age where they could fake it. But <laughs> when they're young toddlers or they're just, you know, yeah. these, these elementary kids, man, the kids don't fake nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. In fact, you know what it reminds me of? This is kind of a cute story, and you'll, you'll pro you'll, I'm sure you'll remember this too. We had a problem. Was it, was it Tyler that was pulling the ears of our dog? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. No, he he just loved them. Oh, he just had he, to be touching he, them all the he time. Was, and that's right. Down well, on we them. had a, a yellow lab. A puppy. Uh, <laughs> it was she was just a puppy named Leah, and Tyler. You would always sit there. It was always you had her ears, and she would be like, remember. "Okay, <laughs> that's enough. That's enough." And you were like, "But they're so soft." <laughs> and, <laughs> and you and you, you were times you would sit there and you go like this on, and she's going ah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Kobe, you were just we were like, how do we show him that you don't want to pull the ears of your dog? It's not good. And you found a scripture <laughs> in the Bible where it said that 
you should not pull up the ears it's of the dog. He that taketh he, the dog by the ears, and then I can't remember the whole thing now. But <laughs> we were just like, and so in worship that that one evening, because that's what we could do. You could find different stories that yeah, would apply amen. to the things that were going on. And, and we we couldn't even believe it that we we've all read through the Bible, but that didn't we didn't <laughs> like go. Like let's it. study about the pulling of the ears of the dog. <laughs> but then when we found it. And it was like in the Bible. It even talked about don't pull the ears of the dog. And so I remember Tyler going, okay. Oh, so he was petting it. You know? <laughs> it was you awesome. you were so cute. pulling them because it fell. And that was yeah. about two weeks ago. So the Bible. <laughs> You've learned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were just a wee little He guy. was just a wee little That's man. <laughs> All right. Mama, will you read that second paragraph for us? Said Christ, right? Mm -hmm. On that one? Okay. Said Christ, ye are the light of the world. He has committed talents to our keeping. What are we doing with his entrusted gifts? Mm. Are we letting our light shine by using them for his glory and the benefit of our fellow men? Or are we using them to advance our own selfish interests? Mm. Many are using them selfishly. They do not seem to realize that we are all judgment bound and must soon give an account for the use we have made of our God-given opportunities to do good. Mm -hmm. But what excuse will they give in that great day for not using in the cause of God their skill, their education, their tact, and their perseverance and zeal? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts? What excuse? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's lots of them out there. You know, <laughs> what breaks my heart is mm -hmm. God has given us talents to our keeping to bring honor and glory to Him mm -hmm. and to help other people, right? And that's how we bring honor and glory to Him. What are we doing with these entrusted gifts? Are we letting our light shine by using them for His glory and benefit of our fellow men, or are we using them to advance our own selfish interests? You know, it breaks my heart. Is so, there's so much talent in God's family, in the churches around this country, around this planet. And what's amazing to me is if you, I don't recommend this, but if you watch these singing contests and things like this. Uh, many times, the ones that do very well are the little one. They started when they were little, and they began singing in the church, and God blessed them. And then they take, and as they get older and older, they sing more and more and more, and they're doing beautiful, and they can sing amazing because God has blessed them for His work. But they take it and go on these, these big shows, and they're using it for themselves now to get ahead in life, to make a bunch of money. And, and they may even have some noble attributes of to take care of my mom or my dad or that kind of thing. When, but the focus is not at all to bring honor and glory to God. And, and it breaks my heart. And some, some ladies and some men have become mega stars, mega singers all around this planet. And before you know it, they have, they have laid aside their entire uh, Christian beliefs. Mm -hmm. And that breaks my heart. And I know it breaks God's heart mm -hmm. way more than it breaks mine. Kobe, will you read the next? Okay. We need divine help if we would keep our lights burning. But Jesus died to provide that aid. Mm. He extends the invitation. Let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me, and he shall make peace with me. Cling to the arm of infinite power. Then you will find him precious to your soul, and all heaven will be at your command. Mm. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we shall have the companionship of holy angels. Amen. That is such an awesome thought. And I know we've talked about that in worship, just to think of the presence being so close. And when, you know, that if they can be so close, then we can also be distancing ourselves. that yeah. they can be far away. Mm -hmm. And I just think, oh, I want that presence close. Amen. We want God's angels, mm -hmm. not the devil's. Mm -hmm. To Joshua it was said, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou will walk in my ways, if thou will keep my charge, I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. And who are these that stand by? They are the angels of God. Mm. Joshua must have a living, confiding trust in God every day. And then angels would walk with him, and the power of God would rest upon him in all of his labors. Mm. So there's angels of God. Joshua must have a living, confiding trust in God every day, right? Mm -hmm. And then the angels would walk with him. Mm -hmm. And the power of God rests upon him in all of his labors. 
Okay, that's that's a power that I want. I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not a power for myself to say, no. oh, 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 you know, no. but rather to have to have that power to where they're there protecting. Mm -hmm. They are there guiding. God is there and he's he's wanting to impress our minds. Mm -hmm. He wants to help us through every situation and help us navigate through life. And and not that he always navigates us around problems and trials, but sometimes right through them, right? But as long as we're in his hands, we're safe and He's measured everything right. that comes to us. And that's beautiful to think about. We're not going to go through anything that our faith can't handle as long as it's connected to Christ. And it is really the faith of Christ is the bottom line. I'll read that last one. Then Christian friends, fathers and mothers, let your light grow dim. No, never. Mm -hmm. Let your heart grow faint, your hands weary. No, never. And by and by the portals of the celestial city will be opened to you. And you may present yourselves and your children before the throne, saying, Here am I and the children whom thou hast given me. And what a reward for faithfulness that will be to see your children crowned with immortal life in the beautiful city of God. <laughs> That's wow. my greatest desire. Mm -hmm. I know as a Christian mother and as a Christian father, our greatest desires are for you that day mm -hmm. that I can see Jesus come over to you and say, here's your crown. Mm -hmm. and, and, that it'll, and we'll all say heaven was cheap enough. Yeah. Because the, the, even as, as much as it's special to me to know if I'm faithful that I'll have this crown. If Kobe is faithful, my dear wife, she'll have the crown. Mama, if you're faithful, you'll have that crown. But there's just something special and even deeper when I can see my sons, Jesus putting that crown on their heads. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't even need a crown. Just let him have one. Mm -hmm. Let my other son have one. Amen? Yeah. You look a little emotional, honey. <laughs> oh, it is. It is. So think about that mm -hmm. and to want that. Yeah. And as you guys are getting older, I think it's just touches me more. I know you're the, getting ready to be going out in the world and making all your own choices soon and all those things. And <laughs> we don't just want like, you to, but we want you to. <laughs> oh, you know, please, Lord. I just, mm -hmm. and to provide, that's what we're talking about, that the angels being present. Mm -hmm. And as you gain more and more independence, it's like I, I want that environment around both Tyler and Micah, Amen. that heavenly presence to be there with them. And that... Uh, that's not lost. Amen. So when we have a well-ordered home and we have surrendered to Christ and there's fruit in our life, that's an argument that infidels cannot overcome. Mm -hmm. It's an evidence that there is power. It's an evidence that this is real. There's an evidence that we have a living God. I don't serve a dead God. And there are a lot of people that serve a lot of dead gods. How has a dead God got any power? I serve the living God. Amen? And I hope you do as well. Remember that your well-ordered life and our well-ordered lives that are surrendered to Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit living in and through us, and we are now the hands and feet and the mouths and the thoughts of Jesus Christ, then we can be an argument against infidels. In other words, people that are not Christians. And they cannot argue with it. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, no, something is here. Something is better. God bless you and remember that, excuse me. <laughs> God bless you and remember our Father cares. <laughs>